So yeah, guys, so um, like they told you, I'm 27 years old, new, new diamond. I haven't had my recognition yet. It's next week. So you guys are my first diamond recognition. So thank you for that. All right. And I'm, I'm excited. I've been excited this whole weekend. I've been, I've been like having goosebumps all weekend because Australia has always been, since I was 15 years old, my dream destination. So to, imagine, when I, <laughs> imagine when I got that phone call from inviting me to Australia for my first convention as a diamond to my dream destination. That's like, thank you, God. You know, that's like, whoa. So, so I'm excited. And as, as soon as I got here, it's been amazing. All of your diamonds are amazing, insane, legends. So could you guys please stand up, please? Diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. Everybody give a big, 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 big round of applause to all of your diamonds. They're working really hard to give you guys the best of the best. All right. So I'm excited. I'm here to speak a little bit about, let's see my presentation's there. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, about my story, how I got started, and, and what lessons I've learned along the way. I don't really want to teach anything specifically. Um, you guys have amazing leaders. I learned from your leaders. But I just want to share what I went through a little bit um, and how business is nowadays, how it's changing nowadays, and how we're in the, in the right business, in the right moment, right place, right time with the right team. Okay? So, all right. So, so like I said, um, I'm 27 years old. I started the business about five years ago. All right, well, five years and one month ago now, and I was 22 years old. Um, like they told you, my parents were double diamonds. In the, well, they were EDCs in the business. They're now double diamonds. And since I was five years old, in my house, Amway's always been like the thing to do in my house. All right? So they started Amway. They had two car dealerships. Two years later, they were free with Amway, sold both car dealerships, and my parents have been free for the last 21 years. Okay. So it's been, it's been amazing. I've loved their lifestyle. I, the lifestyle I've seen them live and the relationship I've had with them, I've never really seen out there. For me, it was normal to get home from school and for my parents to be there. For me, it was normal to see my parents travel one month and the other and the other and the other and the other and the other. For me, it was normal to have my parents with us all the time. You know, I, would, I remember I would wake up and see my dad in gym clothes every morning at 10 a.m., just laying down. He would never really go to the gym, but... At least he had the effort to, like, put on his gym clothes, right? But it's funny because I knew the business worked, but I never saw it as something for me. All right? I always said the business is great. It works. Nobody was able to, to contest that it works because it works, period. And I knew that. But I always said it wasn't my thing. You know, I was never into the Amway thing. I was never into the products, and, and they didn't have excess back then. Well, well, at least not in Dominican Republic. Um, so I was never into, like, the products. I was never into talking to people because I'm very social, but when I want to be. All right? My mom calls, says that I'm like a hermit crab. Like, once in a while, I just, like, like cover up, and I don't want to talk to anybody. Like, there's days where I'll go into my room, I'll put all the blinders down, turn off my cell phone, and not want anybody to call me or even talk to me. Okay? So I was like, I'm a people person when I want to be, but in Amway, you have to be, like, with people all the time. So I don't know. It just wasn't my thing. But something I always thank my dad for is that he always started me off with the right mindset. And the great thing that the Amway business does and that this industry does is that it sets you up with a mindset that very few people have out there. All right? So early on, my dad used to tell me, because I, I guess he, he used to hear it from Dexter Yeager, so he used it on me. And he used to tell me early on, he would say, Galan, our last name. Galan means we work for nobody. Galan means we work for nobody. Galan means we work for nobody. And luckily, I believed him. So I was never, I was never in, I never had the possibility or it was never in my mind to ever go out and get a job. I always knew I was going to be an entrepreneur. I always knew I was going to start a business. I always knew I was going to take control of my time. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm the type of person that I can't have somebody else created by the same God I'm created, the same, somebody who's equal to me. Tell me what to do, when to do it, when I have to get to work, when I have to leave work, when I can use the bathroom, how long is my vacation, how much they're going to pay me. I can't have that. Is anybody here like me? All right? So you're definitely in the right spot. All right? So I always had that mindset. So I always did a lot of different things. All right? I knew being an employee was never going to give me the lifestyle I wanted. Okay? Why? Because there's realities nowadays. And nowadays, more than ever... You have to become an entrepreneur. Back in the day, it was, it was cool. It was like, it was, it was a luxury. Nowadays, it's a necessity. 
Because now in, in days, things, things are changing completely. All right? So he, reality and bad news. This is U.S. numbers. I don't know how it is over here, but I'm guessing it's similar or it's going to be similar. But in the U.S., 7.7% unemployment. That was last year. We're talking about more than 20, 12 million families with no income in their house. 12 million families. And they still have to pay rent. They still have to pay for all their, ki- all their kids' stuff and resources and everything they need. Long-term unemployment. People with over 27 months without having an income. 4,800,000. These numbers are higher than ever before. Graduates without jobs. Last year, 54% of college students did not get jobs. More than half. 10, 15, 20 years ago, you went to college, you got a job. Five, eight years ago, you, got, you went to college and you got an MBA, you got a job. Nowadays, it doesn't matter. Nowadays, you got an MBA and it's even tougher to get a job. Nowadays, kids are coming out as accountants, as lawyers, and they're getting jobs at McDonald's. And here's the worst part. In the U.S., student loan debt surpassed credit card debt. So we're talking about half of these kids with student loan debts graduating and not getting jobs. Is it not a necessity to become an entrepreneur nowadays? Nowadays, adults that have been working at companies for a long time are getting hacked. How would you guys say it here? Hacked, fired, sacked, trashed, whatever you want to call it, trashed. <laughs> whatever you want to call it, all right? Because back in the day, when you would graduate, you would get a job, and you would have a long career at that company. You don't see that anymore today. Okay? So we have to know this. Why? Because you have to know the reality nowadays. This isn't we want to sell you Amway so you can do, oh, it's, it's all perfect and nice. No. What else are you going to do? Where else are you going to find freedom? So it's good for you to sit down and think about these things. And if you're already in the business and serious about the business, think about these things so you make sure you never quit. This is the reality out there. Okay? And what you don't know, jobs aren't coming back. Jobs aren't coming back. Companies have found ways to do a lot more with a lot less people. Technology is here. All right. Back in the day, I remember the first time I went to the, with my dad to the airport in Dominican Republic, and they had just put in the, um, the check-in machines, the self-check-ins. All right. So in the beginning, they had one attendant per machine. All right. So I remember we're going to the airport. I was, in, I was like 19 years old. We're going to the airport, and these people are there smiling. And then my dad would tell me, it's amazing how these people are happily smiling, showing you how to use a machine that's going to replace them. And I did the same thing. I laughed. I'm like, uh-huh, yeah. Six months later, I went to the airport, one supervisor for all the machines. They were replaced. Nowadays in the U.S., with immigration, when you go through immigration, if you're a U.S. citizen, now there's a machine for immigration. You just go and you hand in a little sheet of paper, and that's it. I thought that was something that you needed, like an officer there to, like, intimidate you and all that stuff. But No. So technology is changing the world. It's changing everything. So today we have to do it. All right, wait. I have my own screen here, right? So you have to become an entrepreneur. You have to start a business. You have to take care. You have to take control of your life completely. You have to decide, you know what? I'm a person that has to take control of my life, my future, my kid's future, and I'm going to make a difference in my life. And the only way to have control of your life is becoming an entrepreneur, starting your own business, working for yourself somehow. When you work for somebody else, you'll never have control of your life. Someone else is always controlling you, your life, and your future. So you got to start a business. But what's the first thing you got to do when you decide to start a business? You have to know why. The problem with most people that never make it in business and never make it in this business is they don't know why they're doing what they're doing. They have no idea. They say, I want to be successful. And if you ask them, okay, what is success to you? They have no idea what to respond. So what's the first thing I recommend you guys do? Write down. Decide, decide what you want. Write it down and ask yourself that question. What is success to you? 
Because success to you might not be what your leaders say. It might not be what I'm saying. Success to you might be completely different to what success is for me. But if you don't know what success is for you, you won't be able to define your life philosophies. You won't be able to know what it is you believe in. Because success, more than just making money with a business, success is understanding your life philosophies and living your beliefs and your life philosophies together while you're growing as a person. That's success. That's what, being, that's what brings true happiness. When you know you believe in something and you're living it. For example, I believe in freedom. I don't believe in having somebody else tell me what to do, when to do it. So if I'm at a job, am I living my life philosophy? This is no. This is yes. At, my, at a job, if I believe in freedom, am I living my life philosophy? No. So one thing I knew in my success, I needed freedom. I needed to be able to take control, to live under my own terms. Okay? So what is success to you? Is it charities? Is it making a difference? Is it having a good future for your kids? I don't know. Write down exactly today what is success to you. You know what the problem is? Most of you, 95% of you are going to get out of here today, and you're not going to write down what is success to you. And I'm telling you to do it. I remember one time, me and my guys were with my dad, and we're hanging around with him because they, they, they had just done, um, I think it was a, a 300 PV and just a couple of more stuff. So I took them to my house. We were like in, their, in my dad's movie room. And we're there sitting down. And my dad mentions a book. He says, you have to read, uh, I think it was um, The Monk Who Sold It to Ferrari. Nobody there had read it yet. About three months later, I was with that same group and a couple of more people. And my dad passes by. It was at an event. And he's like, hey, did you guys read the book yet? Nobody had read the book. My dad says, that's the reason people don't go diamond. We tell you exactly what to do, and you don't do it. So a lot of these speakers are going to give you tips. They're going to tell you to go and do things. Make sure you do it. Every time I, came, I, get, I left here, I made sure I did it. Okay? So they told me, go and see. I remember one time they were saying, go and see the car you want and the house you want. And I was like, well, I never really thought about that. But okay, so I left the convention, same Sunday, I went to a car dealership to see the car I wanted. Same day. So make sure you're taking this in and you're really learning from all of this. All right? So write down today what is success for you. Why? What does that do? It gives you your life philosophy and your beliefs. And what happens when you know exactly what your life philosophies are? What happens when you know exactly what you believe in? You start to see opportunities so much faster. It gives you a narrow perspective to what you're looking for. To how you want to live. For example, if I say, guys, find the object in the room. It's kind of tough, right? Tough? If I say, guys, find the, uh, the round black object, kind of round, like ovalish, in hand. It makes it a lot more simple, right? When it's defined. When you know exactly what you're looking for. So the thing is, when people want success, they want to start a business. They say, I want to start a, a car business. I want to start the Amway business. Whatever it is, but they don't know why exactly they're doing it and what it is they're looking for. What are you looking to get out of that business? Does that make sense? All right? So make sure you define this stuff. So what is your why? Number two, you have to understand that the game changed. You have to understand that the game changed. The same way technology is, is, is replacing employment, it's replacing businesses. You have to understand that nowadays, you can't start a traditional business the way it was back then. You'll last 10, maybe 15 years in the market. I have friends where we're talking about businesses, they're not in the business, and they tell me, I want to have a car dealership. And I'm like, where is your vision? Do you not see the clues? Because in life, in the economy, there's clues telling you what's going to happen and what's the next thing. There's always clues in life. I tell my friends... If you're with your girlfriend and, and the phone goes off and she like turns it over right away, that's a clue. <laughs> if she every time puts the cell phone down th that way and not this way, that's a clue. So there's clues that lead to things if you follow them. So this guy tells me about the car dealership thing and I'm like telling him, okay, have you seen, it's going to disappear in the next 15, 20 years. Car dealerships are going to disappear. Have you seen Tesla? 
They say yes. Did you see how Tesla directly, not franchise, directly put in a store in malls? They have no inventory. They have no cars. They don't have a lot of 30 cars. They have two models. You pick, you choose, you order, you get. That's Tesla. So what happens? If I'm Tesla, I'm getting the, the money. I'm going direct. What Amway does? Directly to the consumer. I get the money for me. Most car dealerships, like Mercedes-Benz, if they have a Mercedes-Benz Melbourne or whatever, they have somebody in between who has to make some profit. And they have inventory that they're sending. So the question is, do you not think that Mercedes, BMW, Porsche, all these people, when they see Tesla making a lot of profit with the way they're doing business, are they not going to follow that trend? Common sense. So when somebody tells me when they want to start, that they want to start a business, I think 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, how is that business going to go? So here's the thing. I knew that I had to do something in the new economy. I knew I had to do something different. I knew I had to do something because technology and globalization is changing the game, the game completely. So what is to become an entrepreneur in the new economy? What could I do? I saw people starting apps, applications. I saw people starting softwares. All right, social networks, Facebook, all this stuff. The problem is I don't know how to make an application. I definitely don't know how to create something like Facebook. I definitely don't know how to create a software like Apple. I don't know how to create a software like Microsoft. And the worst part is how many people do know yet don't make any money off of it yet or aren't even millionaires yet? It's such a narrow market for a few people. So the question is, what can somebody, common, normal person, like you and me, who might not be the best, the most amazing tech guy with the perfect relationships and connections, what can we do? That's where network marketing comes into play. Network marketing. This industry is growing. It's booming. I'm not going to talk to you a lot about that because you'll probably hear it all weekend. You've read the books. You've seen YouTube videos. But network marketing is one of the top growing industries in the world. Charles King, he has a, he has a doctorate in, um, in, from, from Harvard, and he has a book called The New Professionals. The Rise of Network Marketing as the New Relevant Profession. You have books like Robert Kiyosaki's Business of the 21st Century. A book that says the business of the 21st century, in the 21st century, would it make sense to read that? Would it even make sense for your friends who know nothing about this to read that if they want to start a business? Of course. But you got to follow the clues. You got to see how all these partner stores are lining up with Amway. You got to see how more and more companies are getting into the industry every single year. Because it's the next big thing. Now here's the thing. There's so many companies, and there's so many different um, network marketing companies that, that shh, all the time, and they're all like Amway, but better, right? But in every single industry, there's companies that compete, and there's one company that dominates. Every industry. If I say search engine, you say Google. <laughs> if I say soda, you say Coca-Cola, what would you say? Is it different here? Do you guys use Coca-Cola here? Yeah, all right. Watch you guys say something else and I'm like, all right, bad example. <laughs> all right, so in every single thing, if I say computer company, you say Apple. In every single thing, there's a company that dominates and the rest compete. In network marketing, Amway dominates. Yeah. Dominates. Obviously, the company you want to be associated with is Amway. Hands down. Big applause for Amway. Hands down. All right. And people are always going to come. There's always going to be something new coming in. And they're going to say, this is like Amway, but better. But the standard, I was talking to, 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 to Derek Kozak. He's saying, but what do they use as a standard? Amway. Is there a reason for that? Obviously. No, but this company is a lot newer, has more potential, more, you can get more market share, you can do this, you can do that. This, point, this one person comes to me and they tell me, oh, there's this new company, it's whatever, and it's growing, and it's also energy drinks, and it's better. So you have to have common sense. 
And when anybody comes and tells you anything, you have to know exactly where you are. And where you are is with the best. Okay? So you guys are with the best. So I was never into Amway. It wasn't my thing. So what I did was I started doing a lot of different businesses. I knew I, knew I wanted to start businesses. I, did, uh, I sold cars for a while with my dad's old contacts. I, I did events. What I mainly did was like a lot of like events, partying, promoting. I would bring DJs from like Amsterdam and Sweden to Dominican Republic. I would run out of a venue kind of like this, but with like no, no chairs, half parties, whatever. And that's what I would do. So that would make me kind of be, be, want to be a club owner. But then when I saw the club owning scene and how they really lived, it wasn't the lifestyle I wanted. These guys had to be there at four in the morning, whether they wanted to or not. All right. I remember one time, one of the club owners in Dominican Republic that I, I respected the most, there was um, this, one, of the, all right, one of the bartenders had stashed one of the bottles. And when people would ask him for drinks, he would pour from the one that he stashed. So he was making the money and not, not, not giving it to the club. So at, when they found that out, at 4 a.m., they had to call the owner who was sleeping in bed with his wife to come and solve that problem. I was 19 year, years old, and that's when I said, all right, I, I could do this for a couple of years. But at 35, like he was 35 years old, I don't see myself waking up at 4 a.m. to go solve a problem. And I'm, I've always been the type of person that I see something, I do something, but I look 10 years ahead. And if what's going on 10 years ahead isn't what I want, I stop doing it. It's sad how so many times I see people who say, oh, well, I'm already doing it. You know, like I'm already too, I'm already too involved to stop. I've already been doing this for five years. You know, I can't, I can't just go back. This is what I'm going to do. And they, do, they have a life settlement where they settle not with what they want, but with what they think they can achieve for now. I was never like that. I could, I could do two years, one year, three years of whatever. And if I didn't like 10 years down the road, I would stop and I would find something else. After that, I started seeing a lot of my friends that their dads were um, in Dominican Republic billionaires. Okay, there's this one guy, his family was worth about $2.1 billion in Dominican Republic. And there's this other guy, his family was worth $600 million. We went to school together. We were, really, we were really close friends. And I loved their lifestyle, the cars they had. They always had like a 2015 Audis, BMWs and all this stuff. They were in the clubs, like they were like balling tables and all that stuff. They were traveling the world. They were just, it was insane. Like they had to do nothing. They had everything set for them. And I loved that. So I said, you know what? So I had to start a multinational company. I had to start my own big Fortune 500 company, and I know I can do it. You know, I'm ambitious. I'm good, with, I'm, I'm good at everything I do, so I'll do that. The thing is, the more I got around these guys, with college, we were doing international business together, the more I got around them, the more I saw that the lifestyle their parents had and their grandparents had, I did not want. I wanted the grandchildren's lifestyle. And in my case, I wasn't their grandchildren. So in my case, I had to do what the grandfather did, start a company, work for 50 years on building that company. So that maybe if I succeed, I can give my grandchildren the life that I thought I wanted when I was 20. Because their their, their grandfather, he's like 72 years old, working at 6 a.m. every single morning. He has no relationship with with his grandchildren. I didn't want that. So I come to a point where I'm depressed and I have no idea what I'm going to do with my life. I'm 21, turning 22, and I start, you know, I start even like, I start, I get frustrated. I start doing some drinking and I start just doing nothing. I was always ambitious and productive. I stopped being productive. I stopped being ambitious because I said, what is the point? Nothing, I, nothing I'm going to do is going to give me a lifestyle I want. So I would go to college, be lazy, and do anything. I stopped doing events. I stopped doing promoting. I stopped doing everything. One day, Tuesday, this was September, five years ago, on a Tuesday at 10 a.m. I leave my college course. I go home. Tuesday, 10 a.m., I walk up the stairs of my house. I look to the left, and I see my dad in gym clothes laying down. So here's the thing. I've always seen that same scenario, and I just say, hey, Dad, what's up? And I go to my room. But for some reason, this day, I, I look to the left, I see that, and I go, I said, this guy is just, 
joking around with life. He is cheating life, you know? And I had the common sense to say, Dad, you know what? Explain that business to me again, because obviously I didn't understand something. All right? So my dad, he shows me the business. He shows me the plan. Understand, I know the Amway speech. In my house, since I've been five years old, they present the Amway plan every day. <laughs> so if you're here and you think, yo, I, I know what Amway is. I've been, I've been in it twice. They've showed it to me ten times. I have a cousin. I have whatever. If someone thought they knew what Amway was, it was me. <laughs> my parents were the highest level in our country. All right. When I walked around our college, our college, Dominican Republic is a very like social class elite country, okay, third world country. So, so in our university it was like a top university, and there's where we had like all like the billionaires and all this stuff. So when I walked around, people would say, "No, he, his parents own Amway or something like that," you know. So in my country, they thought my parents owned Amway. You know, I thought I think I thought my parents owned Amway. <laughs> you know, so. So my dad explains the business to me. I know everything. Yeah, the dream. Yeah, network, networks and this and that. But where my dad got me is when he told me, Theo, out there, most people, they work, they graduate, and they work 35 to 45 years of their life. House to job, house to job, house to job, house to business, house to business, house to business. Every single day. Working five days a week for two days of, of, weekend, of a weekend. For two weekend days, yeah. Working 50 weeks a year waiting for two weeks of vacation. They go to the happy hour to relieve and stress from their jobs. Most aren't happy. Most aren't a routine. Most lost their passion towards what they're doing. Most don't leave a trace in life. In this business, I know you don't like it. He knew I didn't like it. He says, I know you don't like it. But you're going to work hard. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be overnight. It's going to be hard. And you got to treat it like a real business. But if you do it right, you can build a money-making machine. My plan was, I go, Dad, I'm going to do whatever it is you tell me to do. And, you know, I never do that. All right? <laughs> but I decided I was going to do that. I was going to work hard like I've never worked in my life. And for the moment, it was good. It's what got me going. All right? It's what got me started. Did I see this as a long-term, I'm going to be a legacy? What? No. I said two to five years, and I'm free, and I'll live a free life. Does that sound good anyways? It sounds amazing. All right? So I started the business. Next day, I'm excited. I go to college, and there's my friends in, like, in the cafeteria, and I go to them, and I say, guys, we're going to get rich. All right? We're going to be young. We're going to travel the world. We're going to be, you know, date. I said dating models. I said like all this stuff. Like, all right, we're going to be, and together as friends, not just one success, but together, shared success. And they all look at me. They look at each other. Oh, <laughs> your dad brainwashed you. And they started making fun of me like I never thought my friends would ever make fun of me. Insane, like insanely. Like they, they took it to a level where I started getting really, really mad. You know, and I'm looking at them and I didn't understand. Like in my case, I didn't understand. Because if I have a friend and my friend John starts selling oranges in the street, I'm not going to drive by in a car and say, Ha, ah, John's selling oranges. Ha, <laughs> ha. No. If I ever want to buy an orange, I'll go to my friend John, I'll support him, and I'll buy an orange from him. That's what friends do. Okay? So when my friend started making fun of me, it got me really pissed. It got me really mad. All right? I didn't understand it. All right? So I go home, I tell my dad, and my dad says, Theo, if you don't want people to laugh at you, criticize you, or see you differently then stay in the masses. Because when you're one of them, nobody sees you. Now, if you want to do something that's going to transcend, if you want to do something that's going to leave a legacy, if you want to do something that's going to leave a trace showing that you lived, you have to understand, people won't understand. People are going to make fun of you. 
people are going to criticize you. Because you're different. So the first thing you have to do when you're an entrepreneur, this or anything, is understand that not everybody will understand. Jeff Bezos said, an entrepreneur must be willing to do to be misunderstood for long periods of time. So Jeff Bezos from Amazon says, an entrepreneur must be willing to be misunderstood for long periods of time. It's not your Amway Diamond saying, guys, it's, um, people aren't going to understand. No, it's Jeff Bezos too. Anybody who is successful understands this. And the number one thing, people tell me, what's the catch in Amway? The catch in Amway is when you get started and you want everybody to understand. And they don't. And you sometimes don't remember when you didn't understand. Who here was ever negative with Amway? A lot. Who here said it wasn't their kind of thing? Most of you. And now, since you understood it, now you want everybody to magically understand too? (laughs) It's not going to happen. All right? It's part of success. So you have to understand that. Mark Zuckerberg said, success is not a popularity contest. So the sooner you get, the sooner you go through the catch, which is people won't understand, the sooner you'll start growing your business. You have to become immune to what people say. You have to become immune to what people, how people laugh at you. You have to be immune to what they think of you. You have to just do what you have to do, period. Okay? So what do you want? You want to look for people who believe what you believe in. So the great thing is that since you started and you did the why thing and you know what you believe in, you're going to search for people that believe in the same things you believe in. You're going to sell to people who believe and connect with you. You're going to look for great people. People who can fall in love with your brand, business, organization. All right? Steve Jobs from Apple. When he would do an interview, he would ask himself when he was interviewing them, can I see this person falling in love with Apple? When I show the plan, I ask myself, can I see this person falling in love with my organization? Those are the people you want. Do we know who they are? No, so we show the plan to everybody. But you have to understand that these are the people that are going to get, get in with you. And these are the people who are going to get in because they believe in what you believe. So the number one thing is you have to know what you believe in. You have to know why you're doing this. Number two, you have to have an insane work ethic. As soon as I started, I took this seriously. I'm the type of person that when I say I'm going to do something, I do it, period. I was naive enough, I was naive enough to not have that mental game in my head. All right? The only mental part was that first moment with my friends. My dad got me through that, and that was it. I started showing the plan all the time. I did over 75 plans in my first month. None of them went to one of our open workshops or info sessions or whatever it is you call them here. What do you call them here? Info sessions? Okay. Not one person went. Do you know how horrible you have to be to show 75 plans and not get one person to follow up on to take them to an info session. There was one guy who almost made it, and he's calling me, and he says, Theo, I'm almost there. I'm there in five minutes. I'm still waiting for him. <laughs> All right? And I remember how I would go, and I, was always, I would tell my parents, Mom, I have like seven guests today, and this is going to be great. This is the day. It's going to happen. I would get to the, to the event. None of my guests ever showed up. I would sit in the back stay quiet, and I would leave as soon as possible. I didn't even stay because I felt felt that since I didn't have the results in the performance, I I, I felt embarrassed. I would leave. My mom later on told me how she would have tears. You know how moms are, right? So she would have tears seeing me because I was excited, and then she would see I would have no guests, and I would, like, quietly leave. See, the moms, you were like, you know? But that didn't stop me. I got frustrated, and I kept going. People tell me, Theo, how is it that you get through um, frustration? What is it that, you know, when you're, like, not there and you're, like, kind of, like, uh, oh, but no. You know, and people are always asking that, you know, and what's the secret, you know, what, so what do I do and the mental part, so how do I get ready and when do I make, like, the decision? Or Guys, success comes to the person who stays frustrated for the least amount of time. Everybody gets frustrated. Your diamonds get frustrated. The difference is that if 
if, if Bert Gula gets frustrated, it'll be like a 10-minute thing, and 10 minutes later, he's great. While other people are doing two weeks of frustration, or six months of frustration, or a whole year of frustration doing the Amway business. If you learn to shore in your frustrations and keep going, you will become a diamond. That's the trick. That's the secret. Okay? So I kept on going. So first two months, nobody got in my business. I showed 70, over 70 plans both months. Third and fourth month, over 50 people got in my business and I went silver. Okay? So I went silver in four months and a half, but it was really two months and a half where people started coming in. But if I would have quit after those first two months, I would have never known what was going to happen in the next two. That's why you can never quit. That's why when you leave here, you got to make sure you keep going, 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 going. True persistence. I was saying yesterday, I think it was yesterday at the meeting, that true persistence is to keep going with the same passion, the same energy, and the same work ethic as when you started. People get started and they say, you know what? I'm going to be your first silver. I'm gonna, who, who was the fastest? I'm going to be faster. He was diamond in two years. I'm going to do it in a year and a half. And I love that because they're naive. And that's perfect. You want that. The problem is that once things start getting tough, you start backing down. You show less plans. You get more scared when you're going to contact because you had so much rejection before in the first month. So you start getting a little bit, uh. And you say, I'm persistent because you're there. That's not persistence. You're just there. You go to events, you show the plan once in a while. That's, you're there. You're doing it. That's good. Maybe one day you will get enough energy to get started for real. But persistence is maintaining the same passion as when you started for, till you make it regardless of how, when it is you're going to make it, okay? So you got to make sure you're really persistent. With an insane work ethic, I would show the plan. I would, all right, so I would wake up early in the morning. I would, before that, I would never wake up early, but I was excited, all right? So I was waking up 7 in the morning. I started going to the gym to contact people. I went to classes, and in, in, I, I would always get late to college, all right? Because I was always like, the, I'm always like late. So, but here, I started getting to college so early because I wanted to catch everybody when they were arriving. And the first people, I wanted, like, I wanted like to t- give them the plan first. So I would show them the plan before the other people came in and were like negative. So I, so I was always going super early to college. Plans all day. Plans all night. And then when I started having a team, after everybody was showing the plan, at 12 at night, 1 in the morning, we would meet up at my house, game plan, see what everybody did, and what we're going to do tomorrow. I would go to sleep at 3, 4 in the morning, wake up at 7 in the morning. In the morning. Why? Because I knew what I wanted. I wanted freedom. I wanted to travel the world. I wanted shared success. So make sure you know what you want and have an insane work ethic. Okay? The right environment. You have to have the right environment where you're going to be an entrepreneur. You have to be, be part of an ecosystem, an ecosystem for growth. An ecosystem for growth. There's a place called Silicon Valley. All right? This is a region in, in, in California. Silicon Valley right now is the most sought-after place to live by all entrepreneurs. Most of the, of the big tech companies came from Silicon Valley. Facebook, as soon as it boomed, it moved to Silicon Valley. Tesla comes from Silicon Valley. Oracle, Silicon Valley. Yahoo, Silicon Valley. All the major companies nowadays are Silicon Valley-based. Silicon Valley has become the number one destination for entrepreneurs. They don't promote it. They don't have banners in airports saying, come to Silicon Valley and become an entrepreneur. So why do they all go there? Because it's an ecosystem for growth. They say that in Silicon Valley, if, I'm, if, I, go to, so if I meet somebody and we're both entrepreneurs and we're talking and he tells me, you know what, I've, I've already failed in three businesses, man. The other guy's going to say, don't worry about it. I failed five, and I made my first 100000 with my sixth business. And somebody else can listen and say, hey, that's nothing. I, fa- I failed 15, and I'm still fighting hard. We'll make it. They say that in Silicon Valley, counting your failures is what it is for most people out there to count diplomas. 
it's more, it's what it, it's for them, counting failures, it's what, what, it, what it is to count diplomas for most people. That's insane. In the real world, or the common traditional world, the more you fail, the more people tell you to stop trying. Theo, you've already started like three businesses. Stop doing that. You have a great job. Does that happen a lot over here? You're going to do that Amway thing? You've been doing it for three years and you haven't gotten anything. What are you doing? Anybody gotten that before? So the real world out there is not an ecosystem for growth. You want to be part of an ecosystem for growth. And this is that ecosystem. This is that ecosystem. In Silicon Valley, there's conventions. In Silicon Valley, there, there's um, ferias. How would you say that? There's like workshops. There's uh, like not a county fair. Like a, Expos, there we go. All right, in Silicon Valley, there's expos, there's conventions. They don't go out and call every entrepreneur and say, hey, you got to remember, we had that convention going on. No, these guys want to be there. These guys here, there's going to be a new product or a new technology that they're going to show at the expo, and they're there right away, all of them. It should be the same thing over here. When they tell you there's an FEC, you should want to be there. When they tell you there's a convention, you should want to be there. A seminar, you should want to be there. A new CD, you should want that. You should have hunger for that. In Silicon Valley, all these guys are hungry for success. Here you have a great ecosystem for growth. You have events. Most people don't have it. In Silicon Valley, they wish they had as many seminars and conventions as we have. Take advantage of that. You have CDs. You have books. You have leaders and mentors showing you how to do what you, and achieve what you want to achieve. You have people supporting you. You have people telling you the same way it happens in Silicon Valley. People telling you, it's okay, don't worry about it. I showed the plan just as much as you did, and I still haven't gotten it. And you have Diamond Team telling you, hey, I, was, I, I, I did four years of hard work. Nothing happened. Six, in, in, two years later, I went Diamond. There is no better ecosystem for growth than in this business. Take advantage of it, okay? All right, so Jim Rohn said that success is not to be pursued. It is to be attracted by the person you become. Success is not to be pursued. People talk about pursuing success, but you can't pursue success. You attract success by becoming an attractive person for success. And in this ecosystem, with what you learn and the person you become along the way, you're going to attract success more and more. And this is an attraction business. This is an attraction world. Nowadays, you see people who are like fitness models and how on Instagram, social media, they get people attracted to them. And they get uh, one million followers. And after they attract people, they start selling a product or an idea or whatever it is they sell. Nowadays, more fitness models all combined are making more money than what GMC used to make 10 years ago. Association of Education, we already talked about that. You have people here supporting you and, and, and together with you. Persistence. I talked about persistence. Be persistent. KFC, 1,009. Google, 187. Light bulb, over 1,000. Do you know what these are? Failures. Failures. KFC founder went to 1,009 doors before he got his first investor. 1,009. People show five plans and quit. (laughs) A thousand and nine, Kentucky Fried Chicken, we all know that name. Google, over 187 investors before they got their first $100,000 check. The light bulb, over a thousand tries. Imagine us if it would have only been 995 tries. None of this. Imagine if the McKennas or the Gulicks would have quit after five plans or all of your diamonds here. Imagine that they would have shown five plans and quit, ten plans and quit. None of this would happen. So make sure you're persistent. Close the exit door. 
My dad always told me this. Theo, you have to close the exit door. The exit door is the possibility for failure. It's saying, I'm going to try it out, and if it doesn't go good, then I'll just stop. Don't say, I'll try. Say, I'm going to do. I'm going to become a diamond. I'm going to become a crown. I'm going to do it, period. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how many failures I go through. I don't care what happens. I'm going to make this work. The exit door is closed. Make that decision. So I closed the exit door. I kept on working. Two years and four months later, I went emerald with four legs. All right, I had my third and fourth leg competing to be my emerald leg, and they both qualified on the same month. Okay, so here's some of the, well, that was my third and fourth leg. This is an, he's an eight, he was 18 back then. He went, he started the business in June, three months, let me see, in, in July. In three months, he went silver, 18 years old. He went to his first FEC or function with six people. Three months later, he went to the next one with over 75. He is not a kid I would have put my money on. If you were, I, I said it last night, if I could bring this kid and put him on stage, you guys would all go silver this month. You'd be like, him? Okay. So, and this is my favorite part, shared success. Not just you by yourself, but with your team, with people. It's amazing to see all these diamonds have success with friends and travel the world together and see each other at different functions. And knowing that me, that, 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 that me and the Gullicks are going to be together at Diamond Club, that's going to be insane. And that some of you will be in the next two to three years too. And that a lot of you are going to be in Hawaii. Together. With your team. With your mentors. With the, pe- with, with the people who are doing the same thing you're doing. With the same purpose you're doing. it. This is at the World Cup. All right, This was the game between... Argentina and, and Netherlands, I think. All right? VIP, I, I won this Amway trip where it was like goals or whatever in the U.S., and, and I got that with Amway. If it weren't with Amway at 25, 20, 25, I would have never gone to the World Cup. Okay? So that's traveling. All right? Every December, me and my team, we, have, we, we, we go and we give food and toys and books to kids in the Dominican Republic that have, that some barely have shoes, their schools are little, like, stick houses with, like, a, a metal plate on top. And we go, one, we go every year just to make sure that we're, that, that we're great, to, to remember how grateful we should be of the business we have and to actually impact other people's lives outside of the business. Okay? So this, this last December, we gave um, food and toys to over 1,000 families in Dominican Republic. Imagine that happening here in Australia and everywhere in the world. The kind of difference you would make. This is me with my Miami team and expanding. And expanding. I still have insane work ethic. I just went diamond and I'm just getting ready to put in way more work to go EDC. Okay? So if this, is my new, this is my car I bought it last year. This is a SLK 350. So it's like a hard top convertible. And I bought it cash at the Mercedes-Benz um, dealership over there. Which in DR, no young kid goes in and buys something cash. All right. I went with my, with, with my backpack. And I remember I went with gym clothes. And my, my little brother was there. And he went with like a tank top. So we're walking in. The salespeople didn't even look at us. They were like, well, one guy looked at us and he like looked up and down and didn't even... All right. So this one lady, she was nice. She was like the, the, the attendant. And she came, hey, well, hey how, are you, how are you doing? I said, yeah, I want, to buy, I want to buy a car. She's like, oh, so you want to look at a car? No, I said, I want to buy a car. Okay. <laughs> so, so we go. I see the car. I'm gonna, I'm, I decide what I'm going to buy it. So we're sitting down. And then in Dominican Republic, like, well, in this, in this car dealership, there's only an amount you can do in dollars. And there's an amount you have to do at least a 70% in Dominican currency. So I took most of it in dollars. So then when I'm there, um, and I open up my backpack, and I said, well, I have most of it in dollars. What do we do? She yells to, like, the cashier lady, and she says, um, Juana, what if they only have the majority in dollars? What do, they, what, do they, what do we do? All the other sales guys that ignored me, they looked back. <laughs> and I had, like, this little urge. I didn't do it, but I wanted to say, with Amway. No? <laughs> no? <laughs> All right.
All right. This is at my Founders Emerald Recognition at Achievers. This is in Medellin, Colombia. This is giving seminars around the world, having friends around the world. It's a lifestyle that it's insane, the lifestyle you can achieve. And it's insane that we all have the same exact opportunity to achieve it. It's insane that one day I was in an FEC at the same level you are. And it was one decision that made it go, that made it happen and got things going. It's all one decision. This is me. This is my team like two years ago. These are, whoa, let me see. All right, so these are my, my, my platinums and above two years ago. Right now we're triple that size platinums and above. All right, so co- some couples, some more adults, some, a lot of young guys. And the greatest thing about this business is that it gives you a chance to make a difference. Nowadays in general, this new generation, and not by, not by age, new generation has the people living today. This new generation cares a lot about making a difference. Back in the day, success was status and money. Today, I wouldn't say that it changed, but I would say that it's, the definition has broadened. It might be status. It might be money. But I would add two more things. Number three, living under your own terms. Doing what you want when you want, with the people you want. And number four, making a difference. Some companies nowadays, Tom's, have you guys, did, did, did Tom's ever get here? The shoes? Tom's shoes, no? Okay, so Tom's, all right, so it was this guy, it was this guy called Blake, Blake Mycosi. Blake went to Argentina, he's from California, he goes to Argentina on a trip, trying to get to know the culture and all that, and he sees kids with no shoes on. Okay, he sees, and he feels bad, and he wants to do something for them. But he says, if I start a charity, I have to depend on donations, and if, I, and, if, and if I depend on donations, they might give me shoes that, are, that, are, that, are, that aren't nice, that they're all like old, old, old shoes. They might not even fit the kids. It's not the right sizes. What if I start a business? And there was this concept of shoes called alpargatas in, in Argentina. That is, it, was, it wasn't even cool in Argentina. That's like a country, country, countryside thing in Argentina. And in all Latin countries. Okay? So the alpargatas weren't a cool thing, but he said they're cheap to make. I can make a little bit better quality, sell it in the U.S., and with some of that profit, I can make exactly the same pair and give it to kids with no shoes. So he went back to California, and he sold the idea to people where, hey, for every shoe you buy, we're going to give a pair to kids who don't have shoes, a brand new pair their size. And people started buying into, not the shoes. They weren't cool shoes. They started buying into the story. They loved the idea. That started spreading and spreading and spreading and spreading. And all of a sudden, in the United States and most parts of the world, Tom's were a big fashion success. And people loved them. Not because of the shoes, because of the story. I was in an airport one time, and, I, and, and, and when I was starting to get in, and I said, hey, I've seen so many people all of a sudden with those shoes. She says, you don't know Tom's? I said, No. It's this amazing company, and they do this, and they do that. And then for the, she's selling me a brand of shoes that she's going to make no money off of because she wanted to be part of making a difference. People Water. Okay? People Water is a, is, a, is, a, is a bottled water company that for every amount of water that they sell, they give that amount of water to villages in Africa, Guatemala, and different places. All these new companies, up-and-coming companies, are doing something where they make money and make a difference. The person that ever talked about that was Rich DeVos with Compassion to Capitalism. Okay? And it's just now taking off. It's just now taking off. And we have the best difference maker of all. We have the opportunity to give an opportunity For people to change their lives. For people to be free financially. For people to get out of debt. For people to make an impact and help other people. First of all said, we we wanted to get into business for ourselves. We understood that other people did too. So we started a business where you help people, help people, help people, help themselves. What greater difference than that? We're making a bigger difference than Tom's. We're making a a bigger difference than people water. We're giving opportunities, and we're impacting lives. Bill Burt once said, how many people are better off because you lived? 
Most people never ask themselves that. But I'm going to ask you today. How many people are better off because you lived? How many people are better off because you lived? What's your trace in this world? What's your legacy? What was the point of you coming and living? I heard once that our, that our life is our gift from God. How we live our lives is the gift we're preparing to give him at the end. The question is, whatever you believe in, to whatever superior power you're going to give this gift to, are you happy with the gift you're giving back? Is it fulfilled? Is it ready? Are you ready to wrap it up? If you had one more year and you knew it, would you th- do things differently? Don't wait one year. With this business, you can do it now. You can make a difference. And to finish off, guys, you got to have a vision. You got to know exactly why you're doing this. Winston Churchill once said, the empires of the future are the empires of the mind. The empires of the future are the empires of the mind. What empire do you see in your mind? What is your vision with this business? Do you only see 20 people in your business? Do you only see 50? Do you only see 100, 100, 1,000, 10,000? What do you see? How do you see yourself living? How do you see yourself impacting? How do you see your business growing? I know exactly where I want to live. All right? I want a house in Laguna Beach, California with five, with, with five rooms. All right? Downstairs, I want a McLaren P1 car, and I want a Range Rover. I want an apartment in New York in Park Avenue. I want an apartment in Miami in Biscayne Boulevard. I want a house in, 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 in Italy with, like, the tree, with, like, the, the, the leaves on, like, the vines on the outside. And I, I want that, like, classic Italian house. I know what cars I want in each one. I know what color I want in the cars in each one. I know exactly how big my organization is going to be. I see stadiums filling up with my organization. I see the Amway Center filled up three times in one month. I see people in Brazil, people all over. I see myself walking through an airport. I don't know, maybe in Panama, who knows where. Walking in an airport and seeing somebody come out of nowhere and say, Theo. And me saying, hey, I'm Felipe Teixeira. Diamond from Brazil in your organization. And me saying, hey, congratulations. I see it. I know exactly what I want. And you have to make sure that you know exactly what you want. You have to have a clear, defined vision of your future, of what you're going to do and how you're going to impact the world. So to finish off, chase the vision. Define that vision and chase it, not the money. And I guarantee you that the trace you leave in the world will make an impact. The world will be better off because you lived and because you did this opportunity and you expanded it with all of us together. So have a great afternoon, guys. Thank you very much.